Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you and welcome as Forum Boxing Incorporated in association with the Las Vegas Hilton brings you the rematch main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Featherweight Championship of the World. First introducing to you the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner. Entering the ring wearing black trunks and hailing from Phoenix, Arizona. His weight is 126 pounds and a record of 35, 3, and 1 with 29 wins by way of knockout. He is the former WBA champion, the current WBO featherweight world champion. Welcome, Louis Sharpshooter Espinosa. champion entering the ring wearing gold trunks with black trim and hailing from Mexicali, Baja California. His weight 126 pounds with a record of 34 wins, two losses, two draws with 25 wins by way of knockout. He is the IBF featherweight champion of the world. Welcome the colorful Jorge Mato As you saw, as always, Jorge has a contingent of fans from Mexico. Richard Steele providing the, the instructions. Espinosa with that slight height advantage. Baez with the reach advantage. For the referee, Richard Steele, it is his 71st world title fight. His 70th championship bout was the controversial Meldrick Taylor Julio Cesar Chavez meeting in this ring two weeks ago. Scoring on the 10 point must system under IBF rules, no three knockdown rule. There is no standing eight. The bell saves the fighter only in the last round. Jorge Paez and Louis Espinosa in round one scheduled for 12. And Paz figures to have a big advantage in overall speed. He was quicker than Espinosa in their last fight. It looks like Espinosa has slowed down in subsequent fights, so the edge in speed should go to Baez. This is the rematch of the 12-round draw, a disputed draw last May in Phoenix. And he felt Espinosa benefited from the hometown decision. It was 12 rounds of furious back and forth action Although Baez landed the heavier and more telling blows, terrific fight at a very quick pace. Well, they certainly haven't started up where they left off because they're right now just kind of feeling each other out, like two alley cats looking at each other. They're not, they're not certainly picking up where they left off. Well, Espinosa's going well. He's exciting to watch with a powerful left hook, but the defense is suspect. That has made every fight an adventure for Louis Espinosa. Remember, he has a cut across the bridge of his nose. Those cuts never heal because they're in such an exposed location. They don't heal well, so they'll open. dictating the uh, rather slow pace of this first round, but he's scoring the points. He's on the attack. He's the one who's doing the punching. Baez with the quick hands, good puncher. Try to stiff on Espinosa, but he was able to punch his way uh, through it. I know you talked with the referee Richard Steele about those uh, straight-on tactics of Paez, which he usually gets away with. Right now, he's got other problems in the corner, but the, the referee, Richard Steele, said, look, I know what he's doing. That's against the rules. I'm going to stop it, and I'll take points if, need, if necessary, uh, which we will see because they're, they're, uh, that's hard to do. It's hard to take points away for that. Good left hand thrown by Paez. Paez on the attack after taking a pretty good shellacking in that corner. 
Espinosa. Coming up on 10 seconds left in round one. This is for the IBF Featherweight Championship. We'll be right back. Kevin, this is seventh title defense within about 12 months. Does that sound right for Paez? I haven't for 12 months. Here's what happens when you corner a wildcat. One left hook, two left hooks. You just can't predict what this wild Paez is going to do. Just when it looks like he's taking a shellacking, he pulls it out. Good block, body blow by Espinosa. He surprised Paez going right at him. Espinosa traditionally a slow starter, but he did win the first two rounds of that, that previous bout against Paez. Well, he won the first round of this one because uh, Paez did not choose to fight that much. Just kind of looking to see what he's got. He's got excellent balance, has uh, Paez, and so therefore he can afford to drop his hands and stay at a distance where Espinosa's punches can't reach him. That frustrates the other fighter and it frustrates fight fans that watch and say, why can't he get hit? Because he's such an acrobat, he knows how to get away from the punches with his legs and his upper body. No holding. You heard Richard Steele say no holding. And uh, here we are, just about a round and a half uh, in, and we have not seen any taunting or any elbows, and very little holding thus far, but it's early. It's scheduled for 12. Well, thus far, it's Espinosa's um, a whole uh, fight. He's dictating the pace. He's doing what he wants to do, and he's not getting punished in return. A few punches that landed were flashy by Paez, not enough to win a round. And in the meantime, Espinosa's working away. Good right hand by Paez, answering the left thrown by Espinosa. when he got stung. He got stung and that woke him up. He came back fighting. Jorge Paez, a very busy champion, his seventh title defense over the last 12 months. One minute remaining. Second round, Espinosa landing the left hand he doubled up he surprised Paez yeah. after faking the right he did like uh, he was fighting sword fighting he went forward with a jab three times bit 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 and he caught him going back Paez is uh, starting to look a little bewildered like what's happening here this is not the same guy I fought a little while ago Espinosa simply outboxing Paez He's a better boxer technically. He's keeping his head. He's not frustrated. Landing a good right hand. Good counter by Paez. As we come down to 10 seconds left in the second round. No hold. Say that again. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. On 
down to round three. Another good second round for the challenger, Louis Espinosa. He just keeps using his uh, calm, uh, expert boxing technique, and he's befuddling uh, Paez. But what's so different from the last time? Espinosa won the last two rounds last time, so some little motor must start to click in Paez now. He's got to get back in his fight. And it is on to round three. This is the premiere of the Saturday Sports Showcase. Next week, the showcase will feature the PGA Seniors Championship. The field including Otto Palmer, Jack Nicklaus, and Lee Trevino. And then two weeks from today, the spotlight on one of boxing's most dramatic spectacles, the Rumble in the Jungle, that historic 1974 bout never before seen on network television. Muhammad Ali and George Foreman, the uh, first installment of the greatest fights ever. That'll be two weeks from today. Again, the counter by Espinosa. Arpaio's now trying to get tricky with the combination. No, he's tricky but effective. He gets down there crouching like an acrobat. You cannot find his out. hand. He's incredible. He's got radar for punches when he gets into that defensive posture. Well, he has been dubbed as boxing's clown prince as a result. Not all boxing people take him seriously. And he will from time to time employ such tactics. He did get away with it and got away with the right hand. Landing on Espinosa. He's got to start cooking now, and he has been so far this round. He's landed the harder and more effective punches, and his defense counts for something. What Baez is doing is loading up the right hand as Espinosa's coming in. Espinosa's gotten used to coming in without any punishment in return, and that may be a little trap that Baez is laid for. Espinosa does have knockout power in both hands. Also has a very strong left hook. Has not gone to it that frequently. He's made Espinosa miss an awful lot of times. These jabs that are going are landing in the air uh, by Espinosa. And that's uh, the uh, genius of this little uh, pass. He just knows how to stay far enough away and then come in when he has to. Depend on his acrobatic skills to make a guy miss when he crouches. And when he comes out of that crouch, watch out. He's like a coiled spring. In their first meeting back in May, Paez very successful in landing uppercuts. And we have not seen that to this point. He's loading up on those hooks, and he's forgotten the uh, uppercut, but don't worry. That's in his armamentarium. There's one right there. That'll wrap it for round three. Yeah. Good. Yep. Alfred Rangel is the pronunciation of Rangel. Rangel. Espinosa, 27 years old, out of Phoenix. He has fought all the top opponents, hasn't ducked anyone. One time WBA junior featherweight champion, they call him the sharpshooter for his precise punching. This is round four. The champion Jorge Paez is making a good combination from Espinosa. Espinosa slackened up a bit there in that uh, third round, allowing uh, Paez to come back into this fight. Paez, notice, has not put his back to the ropes yet. And he didn't get 
as he got caught with Dorsey because he had no strength to push him off. Now he's fighting in the middle of the ring, which is where his usual good fight is. Advice given by Willie Borchardt, the gentleman in the corner that looks like he's got a failed Fu Manchu mustache, was to uh, step up the action, exhorting uh, uh, Paez, saying, hey, you blew the first two rounds. Now, come on, step it up. And, of course, that's just what we're seeing. One minute gone by, and the fourth round is scheduled for 12. This time around, no weight problems for Jorge Paez. He was in such good spirits yesterday that he had a manicure and painted his nails red. <laughs> it's a good thing the gloves are on. He'll be disappointed an athlete that has red fingernails. Not in good spirits here, though. He's trying to uh, clown his way out of it as Espinosa continues to score. The difference now is that Paez is the aggressor. He's coming on. He's forcing Espinosa to fight in the retreat, which is a lot different going back than going forward. I have to wonder about those uh, gold sequin knee length trunks. Talked about it before. I think it would slow a boxer down to have trunks that long. How about his robe? I bet his robe cost more than most of his early fights got all put together. Just under one minute left, fourth round. These are the rounds that are hard to score because Paz is on the offensive. He's coming on. He's landing effectively. But then again, fighting in retreat. So is Espinosa. So these are hard. Ooh, nice hard shot by Paez. Followed up by another hard hook. That was borderline. Might have been a low blow by Espinosa. Espinosa fighting back effectively. These two guys are just trading evenly here. The nickname of Jorge Paez stems from his somersaults and backflips to uh, celebrate his victories. We'll be back with round five in a moment. Uh, you see that late hit? Come back with, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, four shoot is there. Go to him now. All right. I'll ask you about the scorecard. Watch this combination as Espinosa is battling back and taking these rounds by a narrow margin, but he's taking these rounds. It's now 39 to 37 on my scorecard in favor of Luis Espinosa. It is on to round five. The scoring is on the 10-point must system, handled by three judges, all from Las Vegas. Jerry Roth, Patricia Jarman, Alby Shirley, referee Richard Steele, handling the proceedings. Marv Albert with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. Late hit by uh, Paez right after the bell in, in round four disturbed the corner of Louis Espinosa. I don't think it disturbed Espinosa. He's a consummate pro. He's keeping a cool head here, just eking out these rounds. In that last uh, round, Paez refused to sit down. He's got so much energy going right now. He just wants these rounds to fly by. What we've seen so far, Espinosa certainly learned a lot out of that first encounter. He's neutralizing most of the uh, strange things that Paez does, and Paez didn't seem to learn anything because he's the one that's getting caught a lesson right now. Louis Espinosa, one-time sparring partner of Ray Boom Boom Mancini. And Espinosa, man, has come back from adversity a couple of years ago in a hunting accident. He shot himself in the right foot, broke four bones, 
four years ago working as a carpenter. He let an electrical saw get too close to his thigh and it cost him 100 stitches. So he has come from work. Good left hand from Paez. Paez lets Espinosa work away and then he neutralizes us with a power shot so he lands right on the head. And that right hand by Paez just did miss. back there's Chuck they're shooting their power shots right now Paez trying to get back in this fight with hard punches and Espinosa keeping his head and pumping away five six times while he's waiting for Paez's charge Spinoza again able to effectively counter. Little warning about heads. They've been hitting heads here. No damage so far to either fighter. Nice combination by Espinoza. Baez working off the spin move as this fifth round comes to a close. You got, you know, Dorsey is to our left if you're interested in sitting down there. So with his, that's his wife, Leslie, right? Yeah. Leslie, Leslie. Right. you got to look forward to when you fight a shorter man. Watch the heads. Watch the heads go. They just bump heads all afternoon long. And it so far has not been a factor. There has been no cuts on either fight. Yes, Louis Espinosa at five foot seven is taller than most featherweights. Paez is about five five, although he claims five six. So we're talking of a, a couple of inches in terms of height advantage for Espinosa. They also say, according to the tape, that Espinosa's got shorter arms yeah. than uh, Paez. I don't see that. I mean, when you're looking at these two guys, who, who do you think's got the long arms? And it certainly looks like uh, Espinosa, and he's fighting that way. And oh, here goes Paez into the out, and he caught Espinosa. He lured into Espinosa into watching his clown act and hammered him as a price of admission. The second time that Paez has got into the uh, clowning tactics, and both times it worked. He, he cannot put his his hand on top of that rope. He could be penalized. That's illegal. You can't do that. No question. He's picking up the pace. It looks like he knows he's behind. He's getting outboxed by Espinosa in those early rounds, so he's got to start coming on in the middle rounds. This is round six, scheduled for 12 for the IBF Federal Championship. Earlier, as the first part of our boxing doubleheader, it was Troy Dorsey, Amanda lost a disputed decision to Jorge Paez back in February. And Paez took a good right hand from Espinosa. And now it's Espinosa measuring, and Richard Steele steps between. Dorsey earlier stopped Bernardo Pinango 34 seconds in to round eight. Espinosa faking a, an uppercut and then coming in with an overhand right, but he missed him. He missed Paez as Paez is juking and boxing and bipping and doing everything he can do to discombobulate Espinosa, who is just absolutely implacable in his attack. He just keeps coming forward. It has to be so tempting when Paez shows his opponent his head and just stands there. 
Well, we've seen a lot of people Working fall into that up, trap, but Espinosa's not one of them. He's gotten caught a few times today, but mainly he has kept his cool and boxed his fight. Troy Dorsey, who is uh, checking it out. Uh, Troy would like another opportunity at uh, Jorge Paez. We'll be right back. Gonna start with the clowning or oh, a little bit. <laughs> Here's the clown act, and look how Espinosa bites on it. Whoop, oh, he got it distracted, he turned his back, and all of a sudden, point building. A charge by Paez, and here's what happens on the other end. As Paez falls back, Espinosa doesn't fall for it and goes right back with him and lands four scoring punches. How did you score round six? Round six, I had to give to Paez. He had the superior and heavier punches, and I make it 58-56. Espinosa still ahead on my court guard, score guard, oh, a, or close to it. We talked earlier about the alleged defensive liabilities of Espinosa, and uh, he says, if I'm such a bad defensive fighter, as everybody says, how come I still look so good after 39 bouts? You didn't have the heart to tell him he didn't look good, did you? Well, Espinosa got off to the fast start here today. He is usually a slow starter, and Paez has picked it up the last few rounds. They're hammering each other. It's, it's a race to see who's going to land the first telling effective punch. They have been hammering each other, but neither one shows the effect of it up to now. This is going to be a, a fight dictated by conditioning as well. Again, Paez, effective with the right hand, chasing, and Espinosa falling back. Well, good combination by Paez. We're wondering when that uppercut was going to start to make itself known. That was the first effective use of the uppercut. Really landed hard. Followed by a right hand. It looks like Paez is finally gaining speed. A lot of motion by Paez, but no effect as he try to double and triple up on that left hand. It's one of the rare occasions where we see Paez in the corner. Because he thinks he can land uppercut from inside here, and he has. Espinosa showing good judgment and caution, not coming in wildly, but looking for his spots. Trying to avoid that deadly uppercut of Baez's. Watch your shoulder, man. Richard Steele telling uh, both Espinosa and Baez, watch the elbows, watch the shoulder. Half better to go in the south. Roaring hook by Baez. His punches are harder, they're more effective, and they're landing better. Beautiful uppercut from Paez. No hurry, no hurry. And a big round for the champion, Jorge Paez. Final seconds of the seventh. Good. Good fight. 
Yeah, we're, we're it's building up to a good one. Okay. Mm -hmm. decides to unleash that deadly uppercut. There it is with a right hand to follow. All during round seven, he was landing that uppercut. There it is, it is a weapon to be feared. And uh, Espinosa took it well, but how much can he take of that? And the timeout called by Richard Steele repairs on the left glove of uh, Jorge Paez. Just a little piece of tape that's hanging loose. You know, it's hard to put tape on wet tape. Enjoying the respite. Communicating with the crowd. And the Espinosa portion of the crowd booing Paez. Apparently uh, feeling that it is a stall, but it's one of those things, and now we're set to resume. This is round eight. And it is about that has been building. Last May in Phoenix, they fought a 12-round draw. Tremendous action, bell to bell. Many people thought that was the fight of the year. And uh, I don't know of one better. This one's building up as Baez is starting to dig himself out of the rubble of that uh, early uh, lassitude that he had. I mean, he certainly wasn't fighting with all his strength. And now, all of a sudden, he is a demon here. really loading up. That's three straight hard shots. It looked like they buckled Espinosa, but Espinosa came fighting back. Now Paez teeing off. Paez sensing he's the advantage is going his way. is picking up steam. Way through round eight. It is scheduled for 12. And Paez loading up with the left hand successfully here in the eighth round. For the first time, he just started to measure him as he had before. As we said, the referee has been watching for that. It has not happened. Let's see what happens. If you ever pause that left hand out there and keeps it out there. Steele has said he will penalize him if that continues. It hasn't even started yet. under a minute to go in the eighth round of that earlier meeting well they fall to the draw the judge from Mexico scored it for Paez the judge from Phoenix scored it even the judge from Nevada scored it for Espinosa three neutral judges from Nevada are handling this bout Espinosa just got off his first zinging good right hand of this round so far he has lost the entire round he got off one good punch Steele is it his first bout since or his first title bout? He may have done some others. I know that. I know it's his first title bout. Oh, it has to be, yeah. Yeah. Glenn. <laughs> Dana who? Dana Rostin. Yeah. Rostin. And Julio Gavasio. Never been stopped. 
Ooh, good. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. That's Solid connecting block. Paez has been well. He's he's been down, but. Mm. Solid connecting right hand by Piaz. That's the kind of right hand that um, won the round for him in round eight and a half. Now, and draw 76. 76. So Piaz making his way back after the good start by Espinosa. That right hand by Piaz grazed Espinosa. This is the second part of our boxing doubleheader as we open up the Saturday Sports Showcase on NBC next week. The showcase features the PGA Seniors Championship. Solid shot by Pius. No holding, no push. We have not had any knockdowns in this fight. In his career, Espinosa has been down twice in previous fights, losing them both. Chant for Jorge Paez. Paez only down once in his career. That a flash knockdown in the uh, fight against Stevie Cruz. Espinosa able to land with that right hand. He's taking the hammering, but every once in a while he steps in with that right hand and connects solidly with, with Paez. by Louis Espinosa. Trying to get back in here, but just as soon as he starts to do something fancy, looking good, back comes the uh, uh, hard-punching Paez to land something solid to put him back on retreat. Espinosa able to punch his way out of the corner with 50 seconds left in the ninth. Heads are banging, and elbows are flying. of how you can put, plant your feet and use your strength is all in Paz's favor, and no surprise there. He's an acrobat. He knows how to do that. Yes, Jorge Paez, the one-time circus clown and acrobat. Finishing up this ninth round with Louis Espinosa. We'll be back with round 10 in a moment. Two things. Ferdy has just given the, uh, the st all right, all right, all right. The other thing is, um, I had just given a PGA. That's why I didn't. That's what, but uh, it's too much. Okay, okay. All right. Okay. 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 This, you know, this one a little easier to score with the, this one easier to score. Do you think? Than the last one? Yeah. So far. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, so. it's, it's, it's getting kind of even, though. On to round 10. Louis Espinosa, the 27-year-old, born in Winkleman, a small Arizona mining town, now living in Phoenix, comes at a 35-3 and 1, 29 by knockout. And the champion, Jorge Paez, from Mexicali, Mexico. He's 24 years old, 34-2, two, two draws, 25 by KO. Espinosa 
has been given a tongue lashing in the corner by Paul Percival, his manager and cut man, said, hey, you're falling behind here. You better open this round strong, and he has. He's open, trying to land something to keep uh, this machine punching Paz away from him, but he has not been able to. He's still giving ground. Paz still coming ahead. What do you have on the scorecard? 86-85. Paz has won the last four rounds straight on my court scorecard. He's fighting with much, much more enthusiasm, whereas uh, Spinoza seems to have lost the zest for uh, fighting. Well, the first meeting between these two was so difficult to score that the three judges agreed only on three rounds, the first, seventh, twelfth, all Paez rounds. This one, I think, breaks down a little bit easier. Well, don't be too sure. <laughs> Espinosa is doing just enough to make these rounds questionable, so it depends on what you like. You know, he's, he's a much fancier boxer, and he's fighting in retreat, but Paez is coming ahead with a more effective and harder punches. So, again, it's not that easy to judge these kind of fights. I was trying to make it easy for you, Phil. <laughs> it's easy for me. It's hard for the three judges. We're approaching a minute to go in the tenth. Hard right hands seem to dizzy Espinosa. Right after he gets hit, he does nothing for about another 10 or 15 seconds, but fall in if he can. So you see, in those little exchanges, it looks good for Espinosa, but it's Baez that's scoring. Richard Steele telling uh, Louis Espinosa, watch your head. And again, Baez on the attack. Good left hand by Baez. That is it for round 10. Yeah, the end of the round we show. Okay, and all right. I don't think it's a hard fight to yeah. score. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, you're right. Nothing. No. 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 We're we're arguing among ourselves. <laughs> Debating. I'm saying on, a, on an individual. These are the kind of things that win these rounds. Right at the end, Maromero gets on track. Paez, now watch him attack all the way across the ring, driving Espinosa back. That judges love those last minute things. Good finish by Jorge Paez. Now it is on to round 11. Uh, you can sense the excitement in Paez and in his corner. They feel like they've got this guy going. Now let's put him out. Let's get him out of here. Paez won the title last March by taking a majority decision over Calvin Grove. He came from behind to do it, putting Grove down three times. And then closing with a huge final round prior to that dramatic win over Grove. Paez noted only for his connection with his family's circus for the traditional break dancing and moonwalking. Once again, an awful lot of action uh, on Espinosa, punctuated by a hard, hard punch by Baez, which won the exchange. Espinosa's given it as much as he's got, but he doesn't seem to know how to neutralize the energy and strength and awkwardness of Baez. with a small cut on 
the inside of his lower lip. He left some blood on the shoulder of Espinosa. He invites you to come in and punch him. He invites it. And then when you come in, you find a bus saw waiting for you. No holding. Right hand from Espinosa. That answered the uh, straight arm tactic of Paez. Espinosa doing much better this round for the first time in a long time. But look at that. Rat tat tat right off the gloves and top of the head of Espinosa. Don't push. I'll tell you what's a miracle with all the bumping heads that cut over the bridge of the nose has not opened up, and that's the easiest punch, I mean the easiest location in boxing for a scar tissue to open. Espinosa. That's the bridge of the nose of uh, Espinosa was thought that it might be a problem. So Pius goes into his alley. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And as he does so, he looks right at our NBC camera. <laughs> Man needs a, a SAG membership. SAG. Screen Actors Guild. Thank you. <laughs> Didn't want that to be confused. Oh, look at this. So the break dancing style of Jorge Paez as we close out the 11th round. Oh, Richard Steele very quick to get between the fighters. We'll stay right here as we are coming up on the 12th and final round. This kind of corner work that you see, Pies, watch him look at the, at the camera. Is that crazy or what is that? That is a real ham. And Steele saying, hey, cut out the close ups, guys. Let's go to fight. Let's go to Espinosa and listen to the desperate instructions. Three minutes, buddy. You got a Three minutes. So coming up the 12th and final round, I mentioned earlier, Pies has been very effective late in fights. In the earlier meeting with Espinosa, he won the final round on all three judges' scorecards to salvage the draw and maintain the title. Well, by that clowning and, the, and letting Espinosa getting back into that round, he lost the round, and now it's 104 to 105. And you know what? This is still the most important round in the fight. You have, round 12. You have who in front? I have Paez in front. But I thought he lost that last round. He clowned, he got hit, he let Espinosa back in this fight. And sometimes clowning tactics can turn off the judges. You don't know what effect that will have. Yeah, I would say not sometimes, but most of the time. I just don't like that. Who does? Once again, Louis Espinosa and Jorge Paez go to the 12th and final round. Last May, they fought to a draw. Paez defending his IBF featherweight title. We've had no knockdowns. Now Espinosa coming on, he got off to the good start. Not usually a fast starter, but that was the case today. And then Paez came on in the middle round. final round and it is this last half of this round that may tell the story in the corner Espinosa's people were cheerful and said one more round and you've got the championship so he, they think they're ahead they think they can win it here Espinosa is the one-time WBA junior featherweight champion we come up on one minute to go in the final round He is not taking anything for granted, but it's Baez landing the harder blows. Ooh, that's a nice shot by Espinosa. We approach 30 seconds to go in the bout. It is 
chance for the IBF featherweight championship. Baez attempting the strong finish. And that strong finish can win this round. We are down to 15 seconds left of the fight. They go 12. Oh! As Paez continues to attack, Richard Steele steps in. Jorge Paez and Louis Espinosa, who fought to the draw in a slugfest last May in Phoenix, once again go all the way. And we'll be back with the decision. In just a moment, right now, to Don Crickey and the NBC Sports Update. This IBF featherweight title. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Here's the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of championship boxing, we have a split decision. Judge at ringside, Don B. Shirley scores the bat 115-113, Louis Espinosa. Judge Patricia Jarman scores the bat 115-113, Jorge Paez. Judge Jerry Roth scores the bat 115-113 in favor of the winner and still champion, Jorge Decision. And as you can hear, a portion of this crowd does not like it. So a close bout, 115, 113 on all the scorecards. And these are neutral judges, all from the state of Nevada. Alby Shirley had it for Espinosa. Patricia Jarman had it for Paez. And Jerry Roth had it for Paez. And Paez does it with the split decision to maintain his IBF featherweight championship. Let's go to the fight doctor with Jorge Paez. Era, era más difícil esta vez que la otra vez. Era pues fue una pelea casi igual, pero me estudió muy bien, me estudió muy bien y I asked him if it was harder this time than the last time. He said he studied me very well and he knew what I was going to do. ¿Tú crees que la payasada al final le costó le costó rounds con un juez? No. Una cosa es la payasada y otra cosa que pegue, vea. Si hubiera sido payasada todo el, todo el round, se hubiera perdido todas las peleas, pero metí golpe. I asked him if, if he thought his clowning had cost him a few points on the rounds that the judges gave the other guy. He said, no, if clowning cost me fights, I would have lost all my fights. ¿Y de aquí te quedas en este peso o subes? Me voy a quedar en este peso porque está en la... Está en... I asked him if he's staying at this weight or is he going up. He said, no, I'm staying at this weight. I already have the next fight in, in line and waiting for the contracts to be signed. Thank you very much. And back to Marv Albert. Okay. All right, Ferdy. So Jorge Paez now 36, 2 and 2. He has been a busy fighter the last 12 months. As you saw, his seventh title defense, all successful for the one-time circus clown. Acrobat, boxing's clown prince. There's Troy Dorsey, who earlier today has the first part of our doubleheader on the Saturday Sports Showcase. Stopped Bernardo Pinango in eight, and he would like another shot at Jorge Paez. Now, let's go back to Ferdy with Louis Espinosa. Louis, what do you think costs you this fight? I don't know. I just... I felt I had I had done enough to win the fight. I know I lost a couple of the middle rounds. Maybe I should have picked it up a little more in the, the last round. I know I won the 11th round good, but maybe the 12th round I should have picked it up a little more. But still, even then, I felt I had majority of the rounds won. What did you learn from that first fight that made you fight so much better the second time? Just basically not not be there, you know, as much, you know, not be there as much, and try and get off first and land some punches. Thank you very much, and back to Marv Albert at ringside. Well, we did ask Troy Dorsey who he thought won. He said he thought that Paez won, but a strong effort uh, for Louis Espinosa. Paez successfully defends his championship. Let's get back to the studio. We are ready for